I have one particular question. Did your issues, the issues that you have, we all have some type of issues. Did your issues come from your ex or your parents? Women, did your issue come from some man or did it come from your mama? Did it come from your daddy? Men, did your issues come from uh, some woman that broke your heart or whatever? Or did it come from your daddy or your mama? Hey. <laughs> no. Hey, sorry. No, that's not exactly what I was saying. But I was, you asked, what have you learned from my parents? And so that's what I learned. You know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. Not necessarily. Okay. What did you, so what did you learn from your parents? Well, I was raised by my mother. Mm -hmm. So I learned um, about stressing, like not having enough, basically lack. From my father, I learned how to be cold. Like he was very distant. You get what I mean? So oh, he was okay. never like really like open. Like how I see my daughter with her father that type of relationship. And it makes me cry when I see them like that in a good way though, because she has that. And I know she'll have that stability later on because mm -hmm. he's the first man that she's going to love or who's going to love her besides mm -hmm. her brothers, of course. But right, right, yeah. right. So where was your dad? How, 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 how did everything work out? From what I understand, um, his story was that my mom was like a one night thing basically. Mm -hmm. And so from there he left, he went to the military and then uh, he came back and my grandparents and my aunts basically stepped up for him. They did a lot for me, like when I was a kid and put his name on it. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I guess so I wouldn't have any heart, harsh emotions. Right. But I did talk to him maybe like a month ago. And he just explained to me that it was a difficult process trying to be around me with my grandmother and so on and so forth. Wait, wait, wait. He actually ended up. Why? That's interesting. Because <laughs> he actually, they called the cops on him one night when he, I got a little older. So I was probably about nine, uh -huh. ten, and he came to pick me up mm -hmm. and they called the cops on him saying he had just left and he was cursing them out and all type of stuff. So he ended up in jail. Why they call the cops um, on him? What, what do he do? As far as I know, and like, I can vaguely remember the night when he told me about it. Uh -huh. I just remember it being late, probably like eight o'clock. He just brought me back from my grandparents' house. This is one of the times that he actually spent time with me. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, go get my mom. But she wasn't there. So he just dropped me off with my grandmother and he left. He never got out the car. I just, you know, went in the house, checked to see if she was there, came back out. Mm -hmm. told him, you know, she's not here. He was going to go and drop off uh, my stepsister or whatnot. So um, I'm confused. Why, left, he... why are they calling the police on him? I don't know. I think um, my mother did say that my grandmother started treating her differently once she got pregnant because she got pregnant when she was uh, 18. So it, I guess it was some type of disconnection after that. Why did they call the police on him? I don't understand. I can't say. He said it, he didn't understand. He just said he saw the sheriff pass him. When he saw the sheriff pass him, he spun around. Okay, so he came to pick you up? Or see you? No, he was actually dropping me off. He just dropped me off. Okay. Um, said that the cops, when they actually did get to him and pull him out the car, mm -hmm. said that he was cursing my grandmother out, that he was being belligerent, basically, and that they had to take him to jail. So wow. that's all he told me. That's all he recalled. Yeah. Um, and so from there, I think our relationship got even more strained. Um, because by the time I was maybe like. 12 years old, I didn't even want to be around him because I didn't feel no connection to him. Right, like, you right, You know what I'm right. saying? I just yeah. saw him spot, like, in spots. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, was your, was your, was your um, family 95% women? Of course. Of course. Of <laughs> yes. course. Well, I only had two uncles growing up and they were see? molesters. And they were molesters. So, Look, let me, let me ask you this. Why do you think, because this is virtually every black family. Why do you uh -huh. think virtually every black family is 95% women? Let's see. If I had to honestly answer that, mm -hmm. I think it's based off of anger. Like a lot of uh, women in my family seem not to deal well with their emotions, it seems like. Mm -hmm. And we all seem to have some sense of... I don't need a man. I think... 
like yeah, kind of kind of like sexual trauma. I think mm-hmm. um, it's not heavily talked about, mm-hmm. and so then they kind of bury that down because I remember when mm-hmm. I talked to my mom and my grandmother about the sexual trauma that I experienced. Okay, they didn't know how to react. Like they yes. just were quiet, and then it was like it never was said. You get what I mean? Yeah, they they so, try to suppress it, and then yeah. you know because the thing about it is. When you try to suppress something, it's almost like it's like almost like sitting on something metal. Mm-hmm. A- after you sit on it a certain amount of time, it's it's gonna start like yeah, like it's it, gonna be pain. It's aching. It aches to your yeah, sure. and it yeah, and it mood. starts to change your mood, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're trying yeah. to not move because you don't want nobody to know that you're sitting on something. You know what I'm saying? Because you're trying to hide it, right? And what ends yeah. up happening is you turn into this angry, grumpy, resentful person because at, yeah. after a certain amount of time of sitting in this chair, sitting on this thing, guess what? Now you have some type of disorder. You ain't, you ain't mm-hmm. walking right. Or now you have some nope. type of chronic pain, right? Pain. Over time, it's definitely going to get worse. It's yeah. So as a woman... You you have this chronic emotional pain. You have this resentment towards either men or and mm-hmm. the and the women in your in your yes. um uh um in your life that didn't protect you. That's correct. And this is the reason and why I, black women not only don't like men, they don't like women. Yeah, definitely cannot build long lasting female relationships. If I like, I know that, and I still cannot mm-hmm. talk to my mom to this day. She's very honestly to me, she's delusional. <laughs> oh, a lot of black women are delusional. Yeah, they're they're delusional. <laughs> she, let me let stop right there. I I want you to hold on to that story. I just want to say something about delusion and where being delusional actually comes from. Okay, mm-hmm. remember when you were little, right? And and you and you witnessed somebody in your family angry, like ah, ah, ah they, they they mad at somebody, right? Mm-hmm. And then you look at your mom or your aunt or your grandmama or, or, or your uncle, somebody male or whatever. And you say, mommy, daddy or uncle, like, why are you so mad? What do you think they say? Nothing. They usually say. They say, I ain't mad. What are you talking about? Get out of my face. Like, I'm not mad. I don't do that with my kids. But I'm just saying what that parent or yeah. older person is going to tell do. a young person is I'm not mad. If you keep asking me stuff like that, I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna show you what mad looks like. But I'm not mad. Now go in your room. At that particular point, the child is now confused because they're trying to figure out, you know, because mm-hmm. as as a baby, when you're a baby, you can't understand English, right? So the only thing you can do is understand facial expressions. You know. Because you're a child, right? Yeah. So when you're a child, you see this. And you're like, ooh, mama is mad at me, right? But when you see this, that means mom yeah. is happy, right? So as you get grown, get older, not grown, but you're a kid, and you witness your mom like, with this look on her face. And then you say, mom, why are you angry? And she says, I ain't angry. This is your right. first um form of delusion now you don't know how to you you get to the point where you start learning to ignore the normal everyday obvious signs mom yes. is mad but she says she's not so this is telling you as a child to ignore your emotions because they aren't necessarily right. Even though something is right there in your face, obvious. But according to my parents, according to my my guardians, every time I thought I seen something, it wasn't it. It was nothing, yeah. But it actually was. Because this is what black people do. They lie about their own emotions and they suppress their emotions and act like everything is okay when things aren't okay. And they don't ask for help. These are the things that we have learned as children by our parents. So I'm sorry. Go yeah. back to your story. I just wanted to talk about how suppressing uh, where it actually came from. 
Definitely. Um, I can say that because I've, even with my own children, like, we recently started up a new journal for this year. We have been doing it because they've been homeschooled for four years. So they've been doing journals every year. Mm -hmm. So this year in particular, we are going through each stage or each year of their life to write out what they recall, what memories stick out the most. And so for, for me, that's important to them because it allows them to recount. And then actually I let them read it to me too. Um, because I want them to hear themselves saying it and I want them to, you know, feel how it feels as they're saying it so they can express that too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for Mm -hmm. my mom, like, I feel like maybe that was not like, I don't recall us talking about feelings and emotions. You get what I'm saying? Like Like people don't talk about feelings and emotions. I remember like she, um, I had like, it was, I was young, but mm-hmm. I had went to this stage where it was Valentine's or what have you. Okay. And so, you know, all the girls and stuff, they was getting stuff. And I just was like, I didn't get anything. And I was crying and stuff. Because <laughs> uh-huh. I was like a chubby kid or whatever. Uh-huh. So I was like, okay, I ain't getting nothing. So what she did was she bought me a gift and she gave me like a bracelet and a teddy bear. And that was it. Like she tried to like figure out a way to say, you know, it's okay. And you're, you don't need that type of approval. But that's not what she said. She just gave me the gift and said, you know. Here, I love you. You get what I'm saying? But yeah. after that, there was no more experiences where we had like heart to hearts and stuff like that. We didn't right. talk about sex. So then that was also something like we didn't connect on those levels that can be intimate without a romantic partner. Right. I feel like that's important. So why like, don't you, know you think I mean? she she did she give you hugs? No, it was very rare that we hugged at all. Yeah. Like, why why do you think when this? I see her? Uh, maybe I know she said my grandmother, she didn't feel like she was my grandmother's favorite was one of her things. And then, um, she felt very rejected by her own father. So from what I understand, she didn't experience a lot of that. So I don't think she knew how to give it, but I yeah. do recall her always searching for it. Mm-hmm. Um, because we always was introduced to someone knew that was a part of her life for a certain period of time. Some guy. And I guess whatever. You get, yes, of course. So yeah. it was yeah. just, you know, her, I guess, her way of learning to cope with it, deal with it. Mm-hmm. And we watched that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's taking an effect on all three. She only had girls. Yeah. So it took an effect on all of us. Was she hard on y'all? Like, as far as just mean or just, like, you uh, got to grow up and you ain't going to have no man and ain't nobody going to help you, da 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 be strong. <laughs> no, like, what did she do? I think she was more so depressed. Mm. I think she was more so dealing with it that way. She ate her feelings yeah. is what I believe too. Yeah. Um, I just think the way she dealt with it was, and, and she did dislike men, if I can be honest, because mm-hmm. whenever, um, to me, my children's father, he was like the a great guy. He was totally different from anybody that I remember. Okay. But whenever she met him, she disliked him completely and I couldn't understand why, but like if it was a guy who wasn't doing anything with themselves or something like that, which is generally, I guess the guys that she kind of she's told, used she to would gravitate towards those and say, yeah, you should talk to him. And I would you know like, why I don't want to, talk to you. You, you know, you know why <laughs> I want to, I want to break why? this part down. First, I want to ask you this. How close were you with your grandmother? Man, my to me, my grandmother could do no wrong. Like, and I okay, feel stop. like she felt the same to me. Okay, stop right there. That 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 that's the thing. That I I just wanted to check. I just wanted to check because that that's a check. Most black mothers don't get along with their daughters, but their daughters love their grandmothers. Their grandmothers yeah. like this, and this is the reason why. Because most black mothers, they can't keep a man. They ain't got no man. Don't man, no, don't no man want them. And all her sisters ain't got no man. And don't nobody want their little sisters either, right? Well, they, they sisters, mm-hmm. right? So they they band together as this I don't need no man crew, right? Be like fat aunties. Your auntie's fat? No. Okay, okay. My so, mom is the biggest one, actually. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so... You got these aunties and, and ain't nobody got no man and everybody angry or whatever. And what actually happens is your mom can't find a man to save her life. Right. And she sees you growing up, starting to, you know, grow breasts or whatever and start being attractive or whatever. 
she begins to compete with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she starts because we talk about delusional, right? Right. A yeah. lot of black women are delusional. And when they get 30 and 40, even 45, they start they they still think they fine. Even when they fat or whatever, they still think they fine because this is the thing. Most people don't necessarily mature past their most mm -hmm. traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. So whatever mm -hmm. traumatic experience that was like significant in your mom's life is a mm -hmm. is a high possibility that she never matured past that age. So in her mind, she's so delusional where she still thinks that she's 22 years old. She still thinks that she's fine. She th still thinks that she can get a, a man that's six two and and, uh, and and got some money or whatever, right? But she can't. So she keeps failing and failing at, at getting the men that she thinks that she should get. Keyword should get, right? And she yeah. sees you get these type of guys. Because remember, in her mind, in her delusional mind, she thinks she's in her 20s. She thinks she's and fine. And I can agree with that. I can agree with that. I right. know last time I recently saw her this year, maybe um, in person, I think it was this year. Your mom? I usually try to like, yeah. Okay. I usually don't go see her as much as I used to. Okay. But um, when I went to see her, every time I see her, she constantly compares how my body type and uh, my looks and stuff are see? to her. And she's saying, you have my body. Like, I, I remember being shaped like that. <laughs> like, I remember being saying. shaped like that. Yeah. I told you. <laughs> yeah. So she she subconsciously, like, resents you. She subconsciously hates you in a certain way. She subconsciously sees you as her direct competition. So she doesn't really want you to have something that she was not able to have. Mm -hmm. So when you brought that good man around, she didn't like him. But you brought a dirt bag around, she liked him. Because she is trying to live your life <laughs> through her eyes. So she's looking at the guy that she would pick and say, I want you to be with him. Because she mm -hmm. wants to live her life vic vicariously through you. Right. So she's trying to difficult. pick a, a man that is her type and not your type. That's difficult to understand and process when you're 15 years old, when you're 16 years old. Right. That your mother is actually trying to live through you mm -hmm. and that your choices are the choices she wants you to make for her. For and her. So then you're you're messing up your stuff based on her. Because I remember really honestly, mm -hmm. my mom was closer to my cousin, which we basically um, lived together most of her um, life. Mm -hmm. And then she was like raised by my mom and they were very close, like tight, tight, tight. Uh -huh. And I was closer to my cousin's mom. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to understand why like my mom would reject me so much. So whenever she did see or say something about like, hey, no, don't do it that way. Do it this way. I would mm -hmm. automatically like find myself wanting to do it that way. Right. And that messed up a lot of my, you know, things. Mm -hmm. like I caused a lot of mess for myself. Right. Just kind of listening to her going behind that and just hoping that it get her, gets her approval. Mm -hmm. And it's, it never does. You get what I'm saying? So right. I just came to the point now where I'm not you. I'm not waiting um, on your approval. I'm just going to be myself and I'm going to be loving myself, love my kids and stuff. And then just leave it at that because right. you never uh, approve of me. Yeah. You get what I mean? The only time your mom or a lot of these other black mothers would actually mm -hmm. approve of their young daughter is if she gets what she wants before her daughter gets what she wants. Yes. And your mother ain't never going to get it because she's just like the average black mom. Sorry. She's 40, over the hill, don't know why I uh -huh. want her. She don't got fat. You know what I'm saying? Ain't You know, she shaped like a... a, a, a a water heater you know so she ain't got no shape no more right. you know and she literally just she's probably gonna die alone so you know how people are if they want if, if they can't have it they don't want nobody to have it right so mm -hmm. she feels like she's gonna die alone she's she want her own daughter to die alone but your and grandmother but your grandmother loves you you know why because your grandmother kind of need you 
to be there for her. Because guess what? Your grandmother and your mother don't get along. Your grandmother doesn't like your mother. Your grandmother resents your mother just like your mother resents you. But your grandmother loves you because she knows when grandma gets a little too old, your grandma's still alive. She is. When grandma gets too old, your mama ain't going to take care of her. You going to take care of her. You know what's crazy, yo? Like, whenever I was even younger, I used to look at, because as I look at my grandmother now, like, mm -hmm. she... I pick up on energies better, I guess you can say. Okay. Like I pick up on body language better. Right. And if you do a certain thing with a certain particular body language, it doesn't. It doesn't compute. Let's say it like this. My grandmother will do for my mother. Mm -hmm. But when she's doing it, you can obviously. She tell doesn't she want, does to, do want it. to do it. Because she resents her just like your mom resents you. So you see what I'm saying, right? I ain't yeah. crazy, right? No. It's nuts. So it's, this is the It's not generational because I'm stopping it. Like that's what it is. It's like, so it's this is this is the conspiracy. Neither your grandmother or your mother wants you to get married and be with another man. I mean be with a man. They need you screwed up just like they are. Because like mm -hmm. I said, even though your grandmother loves you and y'all get along. She has a bigger agenda than your own mother does, because like I said, her daughter, which is your mother, is not going to take care of her when she gets old. She's going to throw her in a home. But your grandmother is banking on you not getting a man, you needing help with your kids and the possibility of your grandmother being taken care of by you because your mom ain't going to take care of her. She may be able to come live with you. But if you got a man, if you got a husband, she can't come live with you. What you what you say? It's unfortunate. And yeah, they noticed that they cannot um use you. I'm gonna say use because I can't think of another word right now. That's the agenda. To lose to use you, right. Yeah, was was like, your aunties close to that. you? Were you close to your aunties? I had one aunt that I was very close with, and I had one aunt that watched from a distance because she just had to get away from it. Everybody at a young age. Yeah, yeah. And um, I recall her just talking to me um a few years ago and saying that you know I really could tell that you took on a lot of basically she's like you took on a lot of weight you took on a lot of your mama's like responsibility. Yeah. And I was like you know I knew you really noticed and she was like yeah the way you were treated it was crazy to me she was like and I wish I could have saved you from that and I was like you know I get like to me now when I look at it it built me into who I am but definitely I would not want to put that on my own daughter i wouldn't want to put that on my sons because of how heavy of a burden that is to carry an adult to okay. carry an adult and her two children and yourself while you're growing right so somebody in the chat two things somebody in the chat asked how do we fix the cycle and then uh alicia goofball self done said so no fathers get blamed what do you think about how do you break the cycle and why aren't fathers being blamed what do you think the first thing I would say about fixing the cycle would definitely come from recognizing within myself um, what it is that I experienced. So I would definitely say self-reflection, mm -hmm. self-accountability right. would be the first thing. The next thing would be um, habits, looking at habits that I have. Mm -hmm. um, I would say um, if I see a habit that is not beneficial, then I would ch find a way to change that habit to increase better habits that I would take so I can increase the, the, um, improving my life, the life of my children and anybody I come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason to me that fathers cannot take on the full responsibility of what is impacted upon their children Tell is because Tell the mothers <clears throat> set the stage in my eye. Thank you. For what the children can expect. Thank you. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So when I. Hold on, you broke yeah, up a little definitely. bit. Definitely. I would just say the phone. Hold on, you broke Sorry up a little bit. That. It's okay. Say it again. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. You go ahead. 
Okay, so I was. That's why the fathers cannot take full responsibility or blame. I don't say that they because a woman is um, a gatekeeper, right? Yeah, like the woman is the person that's choosing the these conduct. men, right? Mm -hmm. Your job as a woman, like, here's the thing: we men, we we create roles, we create everything, everything, like we 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 made everything. White men, black men, we made everything. Right. Your jobs as women is to choose men that are good potential fathers and providers and protectors. That's mm -hmm. all you have to do. All you have to do. And you screw up doing that. And I'm not just saying you, I'm just saying women. All you have to do is screw the right man. Require the, the certain things from the from the right man and not just any man. Mm -hmm. We True. out here got to bust our butts, keep this world safe, go to the military. Not saying that women don't go to the, go to the military, but overall, men are the protectors. We're the builders of all these hotels and and buildings and houses and stuff. Definitely, all women have to do is 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 choose the right man. That's all you have to do. Well, it's a little more than that. What else? I mean, because in the end, if you choose the right man, you still have to know how to mother. You get what I'm saying? You still have to know how to nurture. You still. If have you choose to know the right man, you guys can figure people. that out together. Yeah, you still got to learn all that stuff too. So mm -hmm. I'll say definitely choose a guy that you're compatible with for sure, and um, don't just base it off of physicalities in a lot of ways or material. And definitely base it off something else. And require marriage. For sure. So like how how many but kids you have now? I have twins, uh -huh. boys, and a daughter. Oh, how old are they? They're ten, she said. Okay, okay. So um are you gonna require marriage for the next man? I'm definitely not looking to date anyone. <laughs> like, I want to be in that area where we're, like, I guess you can call it courting or whatever, but I'm going right. to take it, in a sense, quite, like, I'm not going to waste my time with it. I if got it's you. not something that, you know what I'm saying? If yeah. it's not something that I know for sure, right. then I know I'm not going to waste my time. And I feel pretty confident that if I do give a guy opportunity like that, I'll know how to choose because, obviously, their father is an amazing guy, so I feel like I'm why don't you, know, you get back with him? <laughs> He's not really there. It's, it's not. It's not. It's not compatible like that. I got you. It's, I got you. it's like you get what I'm saying. Yeah, it's there, yeah. but it's not compatible. Yeah, and that's okay. Here's here's the thing. And I was saying uh, to uh, one of the ladies in my coaching group, um, she was saying about how her ex um, asked her for something, right, and she cursed him out. And the first thing I said, like, why are you cursing a man out? So the first thing I want to let you know, never, ever, mm -hmm. ever, 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 ever curse him out. Because it's stupid. Okay. There's no reason to curse anybody out. And I told the, the young lady that I can't remember the last time I've ever cursed somebody out, like even in my adult life. I have no reason to curse somebody out. When you curse somebody out, that means your life sucks and, and, and you hate your life. It's not even about the other person. You know what I'm saying? It's about the fact yeah. that you just hate your life. You know what I mean? So treat that man with respect. Hopefully he treats you with respect. And co-parent because the most beautiful thing to a child is when a child mm -hmm. can see that their parent loves the other parent. Yeah. So make sure and then you're they're healthy and happy. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Make sure your kids know that you love their dad. You know, you don't got to be with them, yeah. but let them know that you love him and he loves you and he's willing to protect you in certain type of ways, even though y'all ain't together. But he's still somewhat his. You're you're he's you are his responsibility until you you settle down with somebody else to a certain degree. He definitely said that all the time. So that's how I know. You know what I'm saying? He's one of those guys. Like, he's like a real man. Like, he yes. Me. So definitely, he said the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, my yeah. ex-wife, when we split up, she was my responsibility until she got married off. And she, she married somebody else, so now she's no longer my responsibility. But she was absolutely my responsibility. Right. Because she... And that's, go ahead. Is that how you were raised? No. How did you get to that point? When, when did you know that, you know what I'm saying, that that was the case? I witnessed my mom get abused over and over again i witnessed I, I i just used to sit back and just look at my mom like yo why is my is my mom stupid or something i i was just like w what is she doing i just didn't understand and then my mom was just doing all this stuff and then the girls at my school was, were getting abused by different guys and then she'll take they'll take the guy back and i'm like right. what is wrong with women like are women stupid or something like i don't understand i'm i'm a kid i didn't know i'm a boy i'm thinking women are stupid i didn't know so i grew up got a little old or whatever and i seen like women on tv doing it like stars like you know mm -hmm. Halle, Halle berry you know like different people like i'm like yo what is wrong with women you know and then um i had uh my daughters and my daughters started getting older and um i was like all right i gotta figure this out because i don't want my kids to be stupid and I'm not calling women stupid. I'm just saying that was my perception of women when I was young because I didn't know, you know. So um, as I got older, my kids were getting older. I wanted to teach them not to be stupid. And I literally, I mean, literally taught them not to be stupid. And I used to say it. I used to say, OK, so you see that? That's stupid. That's stupid. I literally used to point out stupid to them. TV. Right. Somebody on Walmart, period. If, if somebody, no matter what it is, I'd be like, that's stupid. I literally used to point out stupidity to them. So when they get older, they'll be able to point out stupid and say, all right, my friend, I, you know, I used to say, if one of your friends are stupid, you're stupid too for being their friends. So, you know, so I literally was, was I taught them. And just that, that action because I, earlier I talked about practice, how um, healing isn't sitting on your butt looking at TV when you get off work every day. Healing is about practice. You have to practice doing something differently in your life if you want something different in your life. So Ooh. my children was my practice. Practice things on your children. Tell your children what a man is supposed to be. Um, how you should require marriage and not just just be with boys just because they want to be with you. You know, like mm -hmm. teach them, like tell them that they're beautiful, hug them, kiss them, you know, make sure you tell them you love them, things like that. But you have to practice love because if you don't practice it, you can't teach it to them. A lot of the things children see you know, they see you doing it and then they want to do it. Right. They don't care yeah. about what you say. They care about what you do. So you have to be love. Yes, they do. They only pay attention to what you do. It doesn't matter how much you try to drill it in, into them yep. with your words. It never registers until they see you doing it. Right. And studying alchemy, I think, actually helped make that a little bit clearer mm -hmm. because of the fact that alchemy is just taking um, a raw material that has, quote unquote, less value and combining it with another to create gold, which Ooh. is supposed to be the purest form. You get what I'm saying? So just thinking about it in those terms actually helped me understand that love is a creation of actions. You get what I'm saying? Repetitive action. You um, are a wise woman. Up, you know what I mean? So yeah. I appreciate that, though. It, it took a while. It's taking. It's still going. It's taking time to get to that point, but for sure. Continue to ask questions because you didn't have to accept this. You could have been like, nah, my hair, my dad, I'm going to go to bed. You, you could have, yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the thing about it is you you accept it when, when I hit the button, you know what I'm saying? And um, one, I want to thank you because uh, you 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 do not realize how many women that you just helped by just sharing your story. You know, I like to be of service is what I say for sure, mm -hmm. um, because of being of service, it helps um, helps me to see myself to get better. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So if I'm of service to, to these women, to you and your platform, then that's what I'm here for. 
yeah. because I, I want to be helpful. Um, right. I feel like if I give more than I take, then I'm on the right track. You are on the right track. Your kids are going to be okay. Uh, they have a strong provider and a protector as a dad. You guys are going to be okay. Just continue to be happy because happiness is in you, not in no man. So continue to be yeah. happy and be happy for your kids and teach them happiness and no arguing and, and don't teach them all that mess that, that you know, the, our elders tried to teach us. Cause like I said, mm -hmm. my mom, she loved me. She, she did a lot of positive things, but she exposed me to a lot of negative things. And I'm mm -hmm. glad that, cause I could have been really messed up. I could have been on drugs, all that stuff, but I chose to do the opposite because I looked at everybody in my environment as stupid. Looked at my friends as stupid. Uh, my teachers were stupid. My parents were stupid. Uh, my peers were stupid. The grown people in the neighborhood stupid. Everybody was stupid. So the first thing I wanted to do was to get away from everybody. And I left the hood at mm -hmm. the age of 18. I get that. I was still a teenager when I left the hood. I was like, yo, I want to be like none of y'all. I ain't, I ain't want to be like nobody when I grew up. I want to be away from y'all when I grew up. Yeah, definitely had to realize that recently. Uh, my children's father was like, um, you know, you just wanted to get away from your family anyway. I said I did. I, ever since I was a young, young kid, I just knew I did not want to be around <laughs> that energy. <laughs> like, I did not want to live like that. Like, that yes. was not where I wanted to be. So, yeah. definitely, I wanted to get away from them. And one thing that you did say that I want to make one last comment on was, it's not in, in a man. It's not in a man that you'll be happy. And I think that's something that I had to grow through and, like, searching myself to understand why I was trying to hold on to it as well. Mm -hmm. Whenever we got ready to split and everything, because I was like, what, like, what am I feeling so depressed about? You get what I'm saying? And I think yeah. that's what it was. I think that's what my mother dealt with. She wanted her approval and her validation to come from like a, a man man's love or something. You right. know what I'm saying? So now you need a man, just like I need a woman. We, 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 oh, yeah. we can't be running around talking about, we don't need no man. I don't need no woman. No, we, we need each other. But at the end of the day, we 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 can validate ourselves we need we them first. right we got to be whole first so it's a difference between needing a man and needing validation from a man right mm -hmm. yes definitely two right, different right. sides of the spectrum yeah what's your name well it's pronounced sean quinis but i usually go by sean okay well thank you so much for like joining this live, like the one woman who was like, ah, oh, why don't you say, why don't you talk about these men? She literally said powerful. So you got through, if you can get through to Alicia, oh my God. <laughs> thank, well, thank you, you so much. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Okay. All right. You do the same thing. All right.